Chapter 191, Do We Have to Make Everyone Smell Bad Together? On that day, Fang Hao received a call from the court, notifying him that his divorce request had been withdrawn. His emotions became complicated once again. Despite everything, he couldn't easily let go of Su Rao. After four years of loving a woman, how could one simply move on? This psychological dilemma led him to feel a sense of relief that the court hadn't agreed to their divorce, allowing him to believe that he hadn't completely lost his wife. However, soon after, he felt a great sense of frustration. With the unsuccessful divorce attempt, the court wouldn't accept a second appeal in the short term. During this time, he had to maintain a marital relationship with Su Ro, meaning he would continue wearing the cuckold's hat. What a damn reality! In the midst of his clinic duties, he received the court's notification. After hanging up, he seemed a bit absent-minded. The head nurse noticed and asked, Director Fong, what's wrong? Fong Hao snapped back to reality and said, how many appointments are left? The head nurse checked and replied, there are five more. Finish those five, then stop scheduling further appointments. Understood. The head nurse, sensing Fong Hao's low spirits, went to manage the appointment scheduling. After seeing the remaining patients, Fong Hao went downstairs to smoke. He called Su Rao, and with a direct tone, he said, why did you intervene with the court? Do you really think your social connections can override the facts? Just because I didn't provide evidence of your affair, do you think I have nothing in hand? I gave you a chance for a peaceful resolution. Why don't you cherish it? Do you have to make everyone smell bad before it's good enough for you? Husband, don't get agitated. I just returned from a business trip, and I received the subpoena. I love you very much, and I won't divorce you. Husband, let's talk properly when we get home, okay? What else is there for us to talk about? You clearly had an affair, but you refused to admit it. Yet, I have evidence. I have evidence of your affair, do you understand? I offered you a chance to sign the divorce papers, I even agreed to a clean break. But you're not willing. I filed for divorce, and you used your Sioux family connections to reject it. What else is there to talk about? Talk? Talk about what? Do I have to discuss with you how you played with me while meeting your lover on the side? You have no shame. I still have some self-respect. Husband, don't be like this. I didn't do anything wrong. I love you. Get lost. Fong Hao angrily hung up the phone. He couldn't understand why Su Ro insisted on making their story public. Did she only want a divorce if the whole world knew that she had cheated on him on their wedding night? He couldn't comprehend why, if Su Ro didn't love him, she also refused to divorce him. What was the purpose of keeping him tied to her? He couldn't fathom why Su Ro would defend that adulterer so vehemently. His wife loved the adulterer but not him. He came to the agonizing conclusion that his wife loved the adulterer, not him. This realization caused his body to tremble uncontrollably, and his eyes turned bloodshot, as if the world had become a shade of crimson. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Fong Hao forced himself to calm down. He couldn't act recklessly like Wei Wen, seeking revenge on the adulterer or the adulterer's family, otherwise, he would end up behind bars. Wei Wen acted rashly, ending up isolated behind iron bars. Meanwhile, the class flower and that old man were currently enjoying themselves. Did Wei Wen truly win with his recent actions? In Fang Hao's eyes, Wei Wen had only managed to implicate himself. It wasn't the best way to win. He smoked a cigarette, then received a call from Lu Jing, asking him to come to the hospital office for a consultation. There was a medical discussion involving experts from the hospital and the family members of a patient. Lu Jing handed the medical report to Fang Hao asking him to familiarize himself with the case first. The patient had issues with the liver organ, revealing cancerous tissue and other pathological changes, requiring surgical removal. In a hushed tone, Fang Hao said to Lu Jing, this is a benign tumor, the difficulty level isn't high. Hearing this, Yang Wenjin chimed in, Director Fang, please elaborate. Fang Hao looked at Gong Yidao, and Gong Yidao responded, Director Fang, my skills aren't that advanced, I can't perform this surgery. He then turned to Yang Wenjin and said, Director, can we ask the family to step aside for a moment? We need to discuss this. No, I want to know how you all reached this diagnosis. The TCM hospital said they couldn't do the surgery, the affiliated hospital said no, and when we consulted other experts, they all said it's impossible. I want to know, does our Mr. Jiang really have no hope left? The family member speaking was a middle-aged woman with a well-proportioned face, but her eyes seemed abnormal having a somewhat cross-eyed appearance, which slightly diminished her appearance. She had her hair neatly tied in a bun, dressed in exquisite clothes, 
and carried a valuable small bag, indicating visible wealth. She had a strong presence, likely either a high-ranking executive in a company or a prominent figure in government or association. She looked at Fang Hao and said, I've seen you before, on TV during the cholera epidemic. People I know have spoken highly of you. Tell me, how can Dr. Jiang be treated? The patient's surname was Jiang, and his full name was Jiang Chiuxing. Yang Wenjin explained, Fang Hao, she is Mr. Jiang's wife. No need to exclude her, speak frankly. After examining the imaging results again, Fang Hao said, from the examination results, it appears to be a tumor, and it's benign. There's no spread, and we can remove it through surgery directly. Gong Yidao added, the affected tissue is deeply embedded between the spine and the kidney, making it impossible to approach with a surgical incision. Director Fang, be cautious. Fang Hao nodded and said, yes, it's indeed surrounded, with no clear perspective. However, if we remove the patient's kidney, the affected tissue will be exposed, and we can then excise the lesion, resolving the issue. Gong Yidao objected, but the kidney is perfectly healthy. How can we remove it? Yang Wenjin expressed concern, Fang Hao, your proposal is too bold. Lu Jing interjected, Fang Hao, are you suggesting removing the kidney, excising the lesion, and then transplanting the kidney back? How certain are you about this? Mrs. Jiang also looked surprised and asked, if the kidney is removed and then transplanted back, will there be any adverse consequences? Fang Hao explained, it involves typical surgical risks, theoretically controllable. However, surgery is surgery, and there is a certain level of risk. Mrs. Jiang, this is the proposed plan. You can consider it. I see that Mr. Jiang is not in the optimal condition for surgery right now. You have some time to gather more information during this period. Mrs. Jiang didn't immediately respond. She left the consultation room and made calls to consult with doctors from other hospitals. Yang Wenjin and the others felt that Fang Hao's proposal was feasible, but they found it a bit hard to accept. After discussing for a while, they couldn't conceive of removing a healthy kidney to create a pathway for direct access to the lesion. In an instant, Yang Wenjin felt truly old, realizing that her thinking was far less agile than that of younger individuals. Yang Wenjin said, Fang Hao, if Mrs. Jiang agrees to this plan, then you'll be the lead surgeon for the operation. Be extremely cautious. Mr. Jiang is a prominent philanthropist in our city, and regardless of his financial assets, his societal influence demands careful consideration. Let Mrs. Jiang make the decision. Perhaps she might choose to go to a larger hospital in Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangzhou. Fang Hao remained nonchalant, losing a bit of interest. Chapter 192, Opening the Mouth On the covered bridge, Lu Jing and Fang Hao walked out together. Lu Jing said, Are you confident about Jiang Chioxing's surgery? Fang Hao replied, Director, Mrs. Jiang doesn't trust our provincial people's hospital. She won't agree to have her husband undergo surgery here. Why do you say that? Her husband's condition has been ongoing for some time. After examinations at other hospitals yielded no certainty, they brought him to us as a last resort. We are the least preferred option. Even if we have a solution now, she won't believe in us. If my estimation is correct, she is probably contacting other hospitals and will transfer him soon. Fang Hao's tone was calm, and he added, Also, consider that the one proposing this plan is me, a guy without much authority. Don't belittle yourself like that. If Mrs. Jiang doesn't choose our hospital or you, it's her loss. Since Mrs. Jiang doesn't trust us, we won't insist. Oh, did Lu Yi say when she would take you to Yueya Bay? What's Yueya Bay? Why would she take me there? For a medical consultation, fishing for seafood, he he. Understood. Fang Hao nodded, not making a fuss. With such an opportunity, he'd focus on making money quietly. He went to his office, reviewed the cases from the past few days, and found another direction for writing a paper. However, the quality of the paper wouldn't be very high, it would be suitable for publication in domestic medical journals to bolster quantity. Still, Fang Hao wrote it and submitted it for publication. This would be helpful when he considered future promotions. In the afternoon, he didn't have a clinic session. Before leaving work, he received a call from Lu Jing, confirming that Jiang Chioxing had indeed left as Fang Hao had predicted. The proposed plan and surgery were now abandoned. As Fang Hao had expected and wasn't affected, he left work a bit early. He picked up Tian Tian Jia Jia and Xiao Hu from the kindergarten, only to find his wife, Su Ro, already at home. Honey, you're back. Su Ro came forward to kiss Fang Hao. 
When she noticed him avoiding the kiss, she grabbed his face and whispered, Our children are watching. Do you want us to argue in front of them? Seeing Fang Hao not resisting anymore, she kissed him. Mom, I want a kiss too. Jia Jia pulled Su Ro towards her for a kiss. Su Ro kissed Fang Hao first and then hugged her daughter, giving her a kiss too. As for Tian Tian and Xiao Hu, they dropped their backpacks and ran into the room to play with their tablets. When Jia Jia also went in to watch TV, Su Ro approached Fang Hao, trying to hold his hand. However, Fang Hao pulled away. She then tried to hug him, but he pushed her away. She stubbornly clung to Fang Hao's arm and said, Honey, our child is in my belly. Do you really want to compete with us three women? Fang Hao frowned and said, Whose child it is isn't certain. Humph. It's yours. Do you really think I'd believe that old pervert of yours who just rubs but never gets in? Do you think I'm a fool? Honey, I can swear and even get a paternity test. The child in my belly is yours. Otherwise, I'll die right now. Fang Hao was stunned for a moment and said, Is saying this useful? You can't do a paternity test now. Normally, after five weeks of pregnancy, amniocentesis can be performed for a paternity test, but it carries a high risk of infection, leading to a miscarriage. Generally, it's safer to perform a paternity test after 12 weeks of pregnancy. Fang Hao loosened his grip, allowing Su Ro to bury herself in his embrace. He felt the warmth and softness of Su Ro's body, followed by the sensation of tears on his neck. The body in his arms trembled slightly. His wife was crying. He felt a bit sympathetic but still said, What's wrong? Had enough of rendezvous with your old pervert outside, and now you feel guilty? You should feel guilty because you, on your own accord, withdrew my divorce lawsuit. Now you're still a married woman. You and your old pervert are nothing but a couple of unfaithful people. Honey, it's not what you think. I was on a business trip with Yun Jia, dealing with company matters. If you don't believe it, I can ask Yun Jia to testify. If you still don't believe it, I'll call her and invite her over for dinner so you can talk to her. Su Ro spoke softly, with confidence. The reason for her tears was that, after all these days, she embraced Fang Hao again. The embrace she had not cherished before was now so precious. Once divorced, this man would no longer belong to her, and this embrace would cease to exist. She now understood the meaning of cherishing. However, Fang Hao said, Yin Jia, Su Ro, you're quite something, so well connected. You must have conspired with your boss lady to deceive me. So, I won't believe her words. Honey, don't think like that. I'm just an ordinary woman. I'm not as scheming as you think. Hearing this, Su Ro knew that Fang Hao had a deep misunderstanding of her. She cried even more and said, You deceived me for four years, a whole four years. Now I don't even know who your old pervert is. You've played with me in the palm of your hand. You're still an ordinary woman? If I believe you, in the end, I might die without even knowing how I died. Honey, I never intended to harm you. I love you, only you. Don't say those words, I can't bear it. Let go of me, I'll go cook. Honey, I'll cook with you. Su Ro let go of Fang Hao, wiped her tears, and complained softly, it's all your fault, now I'm crying again. Crocodile tears. Fang Hao spat, went to the room to change into a clean t-shirt, and then headed to the kitchen. Su Ro followed to pick vegetables and wash dishes. However, when the kitchen was filled with cooking fumes, she couldn't control her pregnancy-related nausea. At its peak, she even vomited bile. Hey, I told you to get an abortion, but you didn't listen. Now you're suffering. Honey, this is your child. I want to give birth to it for you. How can you be sure it's mine? It is yours. Because I only slept with you. Honey, don't forget, some time ago, when we were together, we didn't use any protection. Humph. Is protection 100% effective? Wait, when you were with that old pervert, did he use protection? Honey, it's not what you think. What I mean is, I only had you as my partner. Fine. Suro, you really have a silver tongue. Wait until you know I have evidence of your affair, you won't even have the face to live. Honey, I didn't cheat. I love you. Stop. We're cooking now, don't talk about those disgusting things. I came back not because of you, but for Tian Tian and the others. So, don't make me lose my temper. Fang Hao stopped Su Ro's crocodile tears and tender approach. He could see through Su Ro's strategy. She absolutely refused to mention the affair and kept denying its existence. She only professed love for him and insisted that he was her only man. She was avoiding. Women lied, they opened their mouths. While they were talking, the doorbell rang. Fang Hao told Su Ro to wash her face and not to meet guests with teary eyes. Mom, you're here. Come in, we're just cooking. Fang Hao opened the door and saw Zhou Fen.
Chapter 193, Wife Doesn't Want Me to Stand Out Xiao Rou said she returned from her business trip, so I came to check on her. Zhou Fen entered the house, reassured to see that there was no sign of domestic violence. Fang Hao asked the children to come out and greet their grandmother while he went to the kitchen to prepare food. The kids greeted their grandmother and continued to play games and watch cartoons, enjoying their simple and happy time. Zhou Fen used to be against this parenting style, thinking that early education and systematic skill learning should be emphasized for children to gain an advantage. However, observing Fang Hao, she believed that a truly intelligent person would eventually reveal their talents. Those without such inherent abilities, even with early education and training, wouldn't achieve greatness. Moreover, she noticed that Fang Hao's free-range education for the children made them carefree and happy. Having experienced a life-threatening heart attack, she understood the importance of health. Therefore, she refrained from commenting on how Fang Hao educated the children. Hearing vomiting sounds from the bedroom, she went in and saw her daughter experiencing severe morning sickness. She approached and gently patted her daughter's back, asking, hasn't the morning sickness period passed? Not yet, there are still two or three weeks. Suro took a while to ease her nausea. Although it was her second pregnancy, this time the symptoms were more severe. She felt it might be due to her mother's illness, her husband's divorce threats, and the persistent presence of the old pervert, leaving her overwhelmed. But she believed that this situation would eventually pass. What about the child inside? Zhoufen hesitated, she was conflicted. If the child was Fang Hao's, why would her daughter choose to keep it, especially when Fang Hao was considering a divorce? If it belonged to another man, the situation would make sense. However, her daughter denied it and didn't seek a divorce, creating a confusing scenario. This child is my husband's. He's the only man for me. Su Ro was smart and understood her mother's implication. So, she stuck to this statement. You have to make Fang Hao believe it. I'll do a paternity test later to prove it's my husband's child. I won't lie to him. Oh, mom, I heard you and aunt talked about transferring my husband to the health bureau. It's a good thing. Why hasn't it been confirmed yet? After Su Ro returned, she quickly learned about Fang Hao's situation. The personnel changes at the provincial people's hospital were also part of her old pervert's activities. The plan was to transfer Fang Hao to the health bureau, where he would be under her aunt's watchful eye, making it difficult for him to cause trouble. Mom, why can't you understand? If Fang Hao becomes an official, his parents will be happy, and he can achieve more in Jiangdong City. I also support him working with aunt at the health bureau. Su Ro persuaded her mother. She planned to call her father later to seek his support. Zhou Fen said, Fang Hao refused. Besides, he stands out among the younger generation of doctors at the provincial people's hospital. They might not let him go. I also don't agree with Fang Hao entering the system. Mom, why can't you see it? When Fang Hao becomes an official, his parents will be happy, and he can achieve more in Jiangdong City. I also support him working with aunt at the health bureau. If that's what you think, then it's fine. I'll talk to Fang Hao later. Zhou Fen felt that her daughter was acting unusually, but upon careful consideration, everything seemed fine. The two mother and daughter walked to the living room, chatting there. Fang Hao quickly prepared the meal and called the children to the table, asking them to wash their hands. Uncle, the food you made is delicious. Even better than what my mom makes. I want to keep eating at your house. Little Tiger wolfed down his food, praising Fang Hao. Of course, my dad is the best. Tian Tian proudly declared. My dad is the best too. Jejo echoed Tian Tian's words. All right, kids, eat quietly. Fang Hao remained calm and added an extra piece of fatty meat to Tian Tian's plate. Dad, I don't like fatty meat. Tian Tian complained and tried to put the meat back into the bowl, but seeing Fang Hao's expression and recalling his past lessons, he placed it back into his own bowl, understanding the importance of hygiene. Thinking quickly, he then placed it into Jiajia's bowl. Dad, Tian Tian is being unfair. Jiajia also didn't like fatty meat. Okay, now you all have some. Fang Hao put down his chopsticks, along with Little Tiger, each enjoying a piece of fatty meat. Little Tiger, be a good example. Okay, I'll listen to uncle. Little Tiger, true to his name, ate the fatty meat with gusto. Tian Tian and Jiajia followed suit, reluctantly swallowing it. Zhou Fen watched and commented, having many children at home is fun. If I had known earlier, I would have had more. Husband, you teach them well. Su Ro remembered the time when Fang Hao had conflicts and refused to stay at home. She struggled to feed the two children, coercing and tempting them to eat. 
There was no comparison to Fang Hao's current skill, making the children sit properly and eat with relish. In taking care of the children, she couldn't compare to Fang Hao. It made her more convinced that this family couldn't do without him. The children quickly finished their meal and rushed back to their rooms like little chicks leaving the nest. Fang Hao went to get a bottle of wine for himself. Su Ro frowned, she didn't want Fang Hao to drink because it indicated his bad mood. After drinking, his emotions would be even harder to control. But she knew that Fang Hao wouldn't listen to her now. She could only say, husband, drink less. Without looking at Su Ro, Fang Hao took a sip. Then he turned to Zhou Fun and asked, Mom, do you think I have a future if I enter the officialdom? Su Ro frowned, her worries were confirmed, Fang Hao indeed had something on his mind. Zhou Fun replied, you have no future. While being an official might make your parents happy, it's not that simple. Look at your aunt, she worked in the health bureau for nearly eight years before getting promoted to deputy director this year. She's only at the divisional level. Even if you're transferred to the municipal health bureau, you'll only be a clerk, just a 10th level cadre. A 10th level cadre is not even equivalent to your current professional title. Suro smiled and said, but husband is still young. Yeah, young people are easily deceived. Fang Hao dismissed Su Ro's compliment, then asked, Mom, the idea to transfer me to the health bureau, is it yours or dad's? Zhou Fen said, Xiao Ro discussed it with your aunt. Fang Hao suddenly fixed his sharp gaze on Su Ro, as if trying to see through her. However, Su Ro remained composed, not looking at him, and continued eating quietly. But Fang Hao wasn't foolish. He thought that being transferred to the health bureau would limit his use of medical skills and bury him inside. The gap between him and his wife's adulterer would grow even larger. Su Ro didn't want me to stand out. She hopes I remain mediocre, so she can showcase her own superiority, control me, and keep me under her thumb. Fang Hao realized this and, with a bitter expression, gulped down the remaining wine, experiencing a mixture of bitterness, spiciness, and sorrow. Chapter 194, Son-in-law's words are more trustworthy. It's all the wife's mischief. Fang Hao concluded, anger rising within him. He wanted to slap her across the face. His wife was a downright despicable person. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. He had another drink, and strangely, his mind became clearer. His wife could only control him when he had no strength, but once he became powerful, she wouldn't be able to control him anymore. She would panic. She refused to accept a divorce now and refused to reveal her cards because she believed she could still control the situation. But I've seen through your hypocrisy. I won't believe you, and I won't let you manipulate me. Fang Hao didn't continue drinking but switched to soup. He said, Mom, besides aunt, who else from the Su family is in the medical and health system? I want to apply for the position of hospital director. Can you help me with that? Apply for hospital director? Su Ro suddenly looked up at Fang Hao, feeling a bit unfamiliar. Her own man was actually thinking of running for hospital director? Even though she knew Fang Hao wasn't qualified, it still made her heart tremble. The more she didn't want Fang Hao to stand out, the more stubborn he became, like a sprouting grass trying to overturn the stone suppressing it. Zhou Fen said, you only had one drink, and now you think the provincial people's hospital is yours? Come, drink more. Fang Hao said, the Su family has no connections. What about your Zhou family? Zhou Fen said, the Zhou family focuses on the development of the energy sector and doesn't emphasize the medical field. Do you really want to apply for hospital director? Su Ro said, mom, don't listen to him. He doesn't have the qualifications to apply for hospital director. Oh, I don't have the qualifications? Where am I lacking? Fang Hao deliberately brought up this topic to see Su Ro's reaction. As expected, Su Ro said, Firstly, the provincial people's hospital is a grade A tertiary hospital, a unit at the national administrative level. Your qualifications don't match. Secondly, even if your academic qualifications and associate professor title match, you lack more than five years of experience as a deputy hospital director or more. Thirdly, you don't have the experience of being a hospital director in a second-class hospital. Zhou Fen said, Xiao Ro, why are you listing these? Fang Hao just mentioned it casually. If he can really apply for hospital director, wouldn't he be soaring to the sky? He might not even be able to keep the position of deputy department head, and he's thinking about becoming a hospital director? He's daydreaming. Fang Hao smiled and looked at Su Ro, saying, it seems like you've done your homework. A finance person like you knows so much about the hospital's personnel. Are you naturally this capable, or did someone tell you? Oh, by the way, you even know people from the court. Your connections are impressive. 
Husband, this soup is a bit cold. Let me heat it up for you. Su Ro realized that she might have fallen into Fang Hao's trap and felt a bit embarrassed. When Fang Hao entered the kitchen, he whispered to his mother-in-law, Su Ro still refuses to sign, and she used her connections at the court to withdraw my divorce lawsuit. She denies having a lover outside, refuses to divorce, and wants to transfer me to the health bureau to do odd jobs. I'm getting more and more confused about what she wants. Withdraw the divorce lawsuit? Zhou Fen was surprised, she didn't expect Fang Hao to escalate the matter to court. This would tear off their faces. And she cared about her face. She looked at Fang Hao somewhat reproachfully, saying, what's the big deal about this? Don't be so quick to go to court. If there's anything, let's discuss it and solve it together. Arguing openly in court is embarrassing. Discuss and solve it? You'll discuss and solve it, and in the end, you'll still follow your opinions. In the end, you'll exert pressure on me. I won't discuss with you. Fang Hao said, embarrassing? He <laughs> he. It's embarrassing for those who discredit me. Why are you so anxious? You're just a country bumpkin, what's there to be embarrassed about? Well, then, I'll just have to accept it. Fang Hao fell silent and continued eating. After dinner, Fang Hao went into the study. Before long, his mother-in-law, Zhou Fen, also entered. She said, I gave you several math books to read. Have you read them? If there's anything you don't understand, you can ask me now, and then we can develop a research direction together. Fang Hao replied, you're making it difficult for me. I'm a doctor, and your field is mathematics. You, a professor, want me, an outsider, to come up with a research direction? I can't do that. I believe you can do it. If you don't have any ideas now, don't rush. Just take your time reading. Zhou Fen left the room and went to the master bedroom with her daughter. She had something to ask her. Su Ro said, Mom, why are you letting Fang Hao research math problems? It's completely different from his medical background. You don't have this kind of requirement for me. You don't understand. Fang Hao's mind is more capable than my several graduate students. When he says he doesn't understand, it's not that he truly doesn't understand, he just hasn't read it. Zhou Fen looked at Su Ro with some regret and said, Your mind was also very good when you were young. However, you were not focused on your studies. If I had forced you to study mathematics, you would have been a mathematics doctor by now. What a pity, what a pity. I don't want to do those boring math problems. The world is colorful with wind, clouds, flowers, and rain. Your idyllic life is peaceful because Fang Hao is contributing to it. But it seems you haven't realized that. Fang Hao has already taken the matter to court, why haven't you signed? Are you planning to face the judge? Zhou Fen frowned. Mom, how many times do I have to tell you? I will never divorce from my husband. Su Ro looked towards the direction of Fang's study outside and said, I know my husband has contributed a lot. I will compensate him in the future. Compensate? Does he need your compensation? Zhou Fen shook her head and said, Fang Hao has accumulated for so many years. He has true talent and learning. He will succeed sooner or later. Oh, talking about this, your dad has told me several times to ask you to meet that person as soon as possible. Who? Su Ro felt a bit flustered but asked knowingly. Whether you can hide on the first day of the lunar month or not, you can't hide on the 15th. Sooner or later, we'll know who that person is. Mom, what are you talking about? It's like I'm hiding something. I believe in Fang Hao. Mom, I'm your biological daughter. So what? I'm a mathematician. Between sensibility and rationality, I lean towards rationality and facts. This matter is not trivial, but Fang Hao is so confident, and my eyes are not blind. I know you have a problem. If you don't say it, I won't force you. If you have the ability, you can keep this a secret until I'm buried. Mom, why do you trust Fang Hao so much? Did he give you some kind of potion? He is a doctor. He saved my life, and he has kept his promises. He is trustworthy. Besides, when he mentioned your dad and the female graduate student's affair, these past few days, I indeed found out their tricks and confirmed the truth. Mom, are you following my dad? Su Ro was surprised that her mother would actually follow someone. And her mother's health was not fully recovered. Her father, Su Bu Yuan, definitely didn't expect to be tracked by her mother. If her mother also followed her, would she discover something? This, she had to be on guard against. Chapter 195, She Has Desires Zhou Fen's surprised reaction to her daughter was somewhat unexpected. She said, tracking was just for confirmation. It was a spontaneous decision, and it turned out to be true. It's evident that this fact has been around for a long time. Besides, do I not know the kind of person your father is? 
To put it nicely, he's charming and attracts attention. Not so nice, he's like a rotten egg with cracks, specifically attracting all sorts of trouble. Oh, by the way, since Fang Hao is so sure, could it be that he has also been tracking you? I'm Fine. I am open and honest outside. I haven't done anything wrong, so I'm not afraid of him tracking me. Su Ro spoke defiantly, but she had no confidence inside. The voice recorder Fang Hao placed in her car recorded her conversation with the old pervert. Fang Hao investigated her, even going to a guest house, a sanatorium, and even Tian Ji Feng. It all proved that Fang Hao was scrutinizing her every move, and it was almost fatal at every step. Recently, Fang Hao didn't investigate her at all, instead, he directly filed for divorce. He must have genuinely obtained evidence of her affair. Fang Hao kept saying he had proof, but she hadn't seen it. She couldn't be sure what it was. She believed catching someone in the act was impossible. Either she was wrongly accused, or she was too clever, her acting skills so good that even she was deceived. Zhoufen couldn't see any clues on her daughter's face. She just shook her head. With age, her ability to judge people had diminished. She couldn't even see through her own daughter. At 9 o'clock, Fang Hao came out of the study, went next door to get Little Tiger's clothes, and then let Little Tiger and Tian Tian go in for a bath. He turned on the shower, letting the two little ones play in the water. Seeing this, Jia Jia wanted to join them. Su Ro didn't allow it, so she took her daughter to the master bedroom's bathroom to play. Zhou Fen said to Fang Hao, Look, this family is so good, isn't it? Fang Hao's gaze slightly condensed. He said, The one Xiao Ro likes is much better than me. I don't have the ability to live in such an average house. Your new son-in-law is much wealthier than me. When they get married, they'll live in a big villa with several servants and nurses taking turns serving them. Wealthier than you? Who? I'm not sure, but judging by your daughter's current standards, if he's not better than me, why would she like him? Materialistically, at least, he needs a villa and a luxury car. These are the basics. Otherwise, it's true love. You're not sure, or is it inconvenient to reveal to me? I really don't know. Otherwise, you wouldn't scold me every day for being a villager. I'm fed up with it. If I had distanced myself from your Sioux family earlier, I would have been scolded one less time. If you're unsure, how can you believe it definitely exists? Mom, have you been to the sun? Nonsense. Since you haven't been to the sun but believe it exists, why is that? The sun naturally exists, and I can see it. Your argument is absurd. Let it be absurd then. Fang Hao had a flash of insight, seemingly grasping something, but the information slipped away, leaving him clueless. He checked the time, stopped the two little ones from playing in the bathroom, and went to apply shower gel for them, cleaning their little bodies. After tidying them up, he put them to bed. Zhou Fen stood by with folded arms, watching as Fang Hao efficiently took care of the children. She felt a sense of beauty in his actions. When she raised her daughter, there were monthly nannies and caretakers taking care of everything, while she held her clean daughter as if she were a treasure. She said, Fang Hao, if you weren't a doctor, you could be a competent male nanny. Want to curse me? Then curse directly, no need to beat around the bush. Fang Hao put Tian Tian and Little Tiger to sleep, closed the door, asked Zhou Fen to return to her room, and proceeded to perform acupuncture on her. After surviving the surgery, Zhou Fen had weakened, and she should have rested properly. However, she couldn't stay idle and started studying mathematical problems. So, her body was still quite weak. Comfortable. Fang Hao, what's the trick to your technique? Zhou Fen noticed that with Fang Hao's acupuncture, there was a flow of energy within her, making her feel extremely comfortable. The fatigue from walking earlier had disappeared. It felt like the blossoming of warm flowers in the sunlight, standing in a green meadow with open arms, facing the gentle spring breeze, refreshing the heart and soul. It was also like eating a meal of succulent dongpa pork prepared by a skilled chef, the mouth filled with oil, followed by a piece of chilled fruit that instantly balanced out the richness. This son-in-law had real skills. All just rustic methods from the countryside, nothing special. But I can feel the flow of energy. That's the neural movement stimulated by the acupuncture. You are a scientific worker, pay attention to explaining phenomena scientifically. Lie down, I'll go take a shower and come back to remove the needles. Sleep if you're tired. Fang Hao didn't explain much. The principles of acupuncture were profound and couldn't be easily explained to non-medical professionals. It was like Einstein trying to explain relativity, you might understand the mathematical formulas, but the underlying physical concepts were beyond comprehension. Fang Hao took a shower but was interrupted by a knock on the door. 
His wife said she needed something, so he opened the door slightly. However, she entered and locked the door behind her. Husband. Swirl. Fang Hao was speechless, inwardly disgusted by his wife's actions. It was evident that her proficiency came from practicing with the old pervert. Such a promiscuous woman was cheap and disgusting. However, he was still a young and energetic guy who hadn't been active for a while. So, at this moment, his honest body betrayed him. The sound of the shower drowned out that particular noise. After a long time, they entered the realm of the wise. Fang Hao looked at his wife, her clothes soaked. The exquisite body beneath the thin nightgown was enticing, almost causing him to erupt again. Sometimes, a woman dressed is more beautiful and tempting than when she's undressed. Unfortunately, she was a rotten woman who cheated. Sua Ro didn't understand the doctor's determination. She thought her charm was attracting Fang Hao. She said, Husband, once is enough. You take it easy. After a month or two, I can fully devote myself to you. In the meantime, endure it a bit for me. Fang Hao said, Sua Ro, why bother? We're getting divorced. Is there any point in complicating things further? It doesn't make sense. Suaro said, I'm afraid you'll be stifled. I'm helping you release tension. I'm doing it for your own good. Why do you still want to divorce me? Really, you're such a heartless man. Tonight, I'll sleep with our daughter. You're punished to sleep in the study. She gave Fang Hao a glance and left after opening the door. As she left, a faint smile appeared on her lips. A husband like him is the best. Husband, I won't divorce you. You're mine. Forever mine. Fang Hao felt dejected, completely unable to understand his wife's behavior. She has desires. 